notch. As you turn this, you fill the notches. So one notch at a time, and it selects whatever you need. See, I got all these apps. You need to press down, and then you can rotate. You see, as I'm rotating, it changes the highlights. You see? I can enter. Dodge Ram and Jeep Grand Cherokee both share identical 8.4 inch screens. Both vehicles also share identical controls, even if the controls are located in a different place on the front fascia. For more information, please see description below. Quality product since 2002. This product is 100% designed and manufactured in the USA. Please support American jobs. This product is 100% automotive grade product. This video is for Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram vehicles with 8.4 inch screen, 2013 and up. They have new Uconnect 8.4 inch, so 2013 and up to 2019, 2020. That have this control panel, so it has the back button and tune, but it must have 8.4 inch screen. We're gonna demo following product. Apple CarPlay device allows you to create a CarPlay on the Uconnect 8.4 inch screen. So we have the 2013 and up Dodge Jeep Chrysler vehicles and Ram with 8.4 inch screen and this control you can have Apple CarPlay on your screen and it's going to be controlled with the factory buttons back and tune. So it's going to be identical to the vehicles on the market that have even though the car have touch screen but it's identical to the vehicles on the market that don't have touch screen such as BMW, Audi, Mercedes and similar European vehicles where CarPlay is controlled with the radio controls instead of the touch screen because the older vehicle older Uconnect vehicles don't have CarPlay feature so we're giving you ability to have a factory CarPlay feature without any external controls so you can do CarPlay and Android Auto, so it's two in one. We're going to show you a demo in a Jeep Grand Cherokee. However, any Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep or Ram with 8.4 inch screen would be identical installation. The only difference might be is the removal of the trim panel. After you remove the trim panel, the rest is identical. So the controls and the installation will be identical in all 8.4 inch screen, 2013 and up, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram vehicles. So your only difference might be the removal of this, we call it trim beautification panel. But the rest is identical to all Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep with 8.4 inch screen. So first step, we're going to remove the trim panel to access the screen. To remove the screen in this particular car, you don't need any tools. You just start from the bottom, and it's just a lot of clips, but the whole panel just pulls out. So basically, that's it. Your removal is done. There is a connector in the back, which you can remove no problem. That's it. All you got is a lot of clips. You don't have any screws. So that took us, what, 10 seconds? Now you just need to remove this um, eight millimeter, four eight millimeter screws. Let's go ahead and remove the four eight millimeter screws. Go ahead and remove this four screws. Once you remove all four screws, the screen just comes out and you want to disconnect the connectors you have in the back of the screen. So just go ahead and remove all the connectors. They're all pretty much unclip. So you remove the connectors. So in this particular vehicle, you got main connector, USB, and antennas. So there's your antennas. You got three antennas. This is not connected. And then you got the main connector and the USB. For all installation purposes, 
this is the only connector that you're going to be interfacing always. This is the main power connector that you're going to be interfacing and plug it in your plug and play harness in here. So you plug in your plug and play harness in here, plug everything else in and close the car. Demo of Apple CarPlay with Android Auto 2-in-1 plus 4 cameras. We're showing you everything, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and 4 cameras. You don't have to install 4 cameras, you can install none of the cameras, just rear camera like this car has, or add a rear camera. We're going to show you all the options that are possible with this interface, including video in motion for factory DVD player that this car has. Your car may have or don't have a DVD player, but we're going to show you the capabilities and if you don't have sound options you're not installing sound options it's totally fine so let's start first we want to install supplied plug and play harness so you got this main harness you plug it in here and you close it so this is going to go back into the screen this is going to go into the harness that connects to the interface you got audio RCA's this is how audio from your CarPlay will get into the or Android Auto will get into the radio system so first we want to install the harness if you connecting any of the cameras you want to run the cameras from the back Now, you want to route your USB cable, so you can buy any cable. If you just install an Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, or, or it doesn't matter, you see a long cable like this. You route the cable through inside of the dashboard into your armrest. You can route it anywhere. Some people even modify factory USB, but you route this cable behind the panels into your armrest. So, the cable should go through inside into your armrest. You can use either dedicated iPhone cable. See, this cable is very long. If you look at it, it's very, very long cable, right? Or you can use a regular USB to USB and then plug in any phone you want. But the best location is nicely routed behind the panels into your armrest for factory look and feel. For Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, you also need a microphone. So we supply it with a microphone like this. It clips on. So let us show you. You can clip it onto the top. Let's move it. So this is your headliner. You clip it on like this. A specific clip that is made so you can clip it on. And then after you clip it on, you just put it in here. And then the microphone, the way it stays is that you rod the cables behind it, right? So when you rod the cables, I'm going to show you with this white cable, so it's better to see. See the white cable; it's easier to see. You hide it inside your ceiling, so basically everything is going to be hidden, and your microphone is going to be only sitting like right here. And you route it through the pillars and under the panel, so only thing you're going to see is basically everything is hidden, and it comes out over here. So everything is going to come out basically right inside the dashboard. So all the, ca all the cameras come from behind the dashboard factory look and feel. Everything behind, so all your wires, so USB should be here, your microphone should be here. If you're running any cameras, they should be here too. So we got the main harness installed. Now we're going to install the interface. Keep in mind you got to program the interface. We're going to show you how to program it. The programming process only takes two minutes, the entire process program it for Jeep Grand Cherokee or any car or Dodge or Chrysler or Ram whatever you have watch this two minute clip do not forget to program the interface all interfaces are stripped blank as they need to be configured by the installer or end user programming process will take less than one minute and can be performed using Windows or Mac computer Apple CarPlay update the update process takes approximately two minutes this is the software already open on the screen. Software is available for Windows and Mac based computers. Step one, download the updater. It takes approximately 30 seconds. Step two, open it. it. Takes one second. Step three, get a cable. 
USB to micro USB, USB end you're going to connect it to the computer, micro USB end you're going to connect into the interface, then install appropriate software so just for the test purposes we're going to install Jeep Wrangler and hit install and the installation starts and the entire process is probably going to take right about 30 seconds and then after it's installed you basically do install it in the car and don't forget to set your dip switches in the video it's going to tell you whether they go, go up or down and the configuration entire configuration on Windows or Mac computer will take you no longer than two minutes that's everything that's downloading the software and installing so installing the software and then the last step is configuring which is self-explanatory it's everything is in plain English right we don't make it complicated there's no learning curve to this as you can see I hit search I hit install it's only one button so there is no learning curve to use this it's basically all automated it sits as 99% right now that's gonna go away and it's gonna say see device completed click close and then the camera settings you can update again this is all here in plain English on our left hand side you adjust cameras that you want to install if you're installing any on the right hand side you choose cameras that car is equipped with and then how do you want it to operate again it's all in plain English so if you're installing side cameras there are three ways to operate them manual manual with a speed check manual without speed check everything is in plain English again no learning curve the whole update takes approximately one minute you just have to tell the interface if you're gonna install any aftermarket camera and you gotta tell the interface if you have any of the factory cameras you are completing your update and it took us about 2 minutes and 30 seconds for the entire process take it to the car and continue with the installation okay now that you have programmed the interface take your interface you'll find two switches here both switches have to be set to on position this is top on is down this is where the microphone plugs in this is your top switches must be set down okay so you take the supplied harness that we gave you we gave you this plug-and-play harness you got five wires over here with the black heat shrink in the end they're not used plug this in and then you got this one 16 pin connector that plugs in together with the T harness. So you plug these two together. All right. You also have two audio RCAs. You see red and white. You need something like this. It's called male to male RCA. Or you can have one with the wires. It doesn't matter. So they can have pieces of wire. And they connect together with these two that are found on the main T harness. So basically, you got this T harness that plugs into the back of the radio. It connects to the interface and then audio connect to the audio of the main box. All right. With ignition on, check that the LED is blinking. You got the green LED over here blinking. This is your USB cable. So this is where you plug in your iPhone cable or Android cable or just USB. This is the programming port for the previous step and we also add in camera if you're not adding any camera you have rear factory camera you're done but we're also adding cameras before you close everything you want to test everything to make sure everything works so we're gonna connect cameras to this box we got four RCA's right here we got leftover at this five, five cables they're not used you got this cable it's not used and you got four camera inputs you only they're all labeled you only need front left and right cameras that we're installing we're not installing anything else so let's connect the cameras and start testing everything we want to temporarily put everything back but don't close anything permanently because we're just testing so you're gonna take your screen you're gonna plug in the main harness in the back 
take the harness, all right, plug it in, close it up, then take the module and put the module in the back. See the radio came on, that could be Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep or Ram, they all have the same screens. So we want to put everything back, there's a lot of space, a lot of space in the back over there. Look how much space we got, there's a lot of space. But we're right now, we're just testing everything, so we don't want to put anything permanently, right? We just want to test to make sure that everything works. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put everything in the back, temporarily, and we're going to just test. You see I connected three cameras, and we want to make sure that everything works before we start closing anything, right? So we're putting everything in there, putting everything, this is just temporarily. After you finish, you're going to make everything nice, but for now, we just want to test to make sure that everything that we install works properly, right? So we take this, we put it in there. I want to put the screw. I want to put one screw in to make sure the screen stays, so we can test everything. So we'll put one screw in. We want to put take the panel, connect the connector, and put the panel back in just for testing because we want to have access to the button. We're not closing anything. We want to test everything. We want to make sure that everything works. Only after we know that everything works, we're going to close the car completely, make all the wires connection neat and final. Set the radio to aux so you can hear the audio from your device then take your phone plug it in once you plug it in the carplay is going to appear you can do switching first or after doesn't matter so carplay is going to appear on the phone but look press and hold the back button you have this menu the phone connecting connects you see it says carplay so that's it you don't no longer need phone this is carplay now There are no touchscreen controls because this is a CarPlay add-on. However, we made controls identical to any European car. So this is what we're going to do. We have these buttons right here. We got back. So this is like in a BMW, Mercedes or they got a back button. Then you need to turn up left or right and then you need enter. So this is all CarPlay required. You just got to follow this blue highlight. So check this out. Look, as I'm moving the joystick, one click at a time. So this is one notch. As you turn this, you fill the notches. So one notch at a time, and it selects whatever you need. See, I got all these apps. No difference. As I rotate, it rotates through all these options. Okay? So, as you know, that particular one is one notch. One, 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 one. This is your home button, and if you press and hold, it's going to be a Siri button as well. See right there, you got your Siri. How can I help you? We just turned off all the audio, but now if you want to go into maps, you go into maps. If you want to go into destinations, you go into destinations. If you want to go into an enter destination, you can either enter it by voice. You see, I highlighted this, or there's a keyboard here. You can go to the keyboard mode, and you see, as I'm rotating the joystick select anything you want I can press back and get out back and get out back and get out so this is factory we take over the controls and if you press and hold the back button you're gonna go back to your controls and then you control whatever factory stuff you control with this but when you press and hold the back button it activates the carplay and now you're in a carplay mode your full screen takes over the CarPlay, this message disappears, that's it. Over here you got your three recent apps. So this is the maps, we'll launch the maps. This is the phone. You got the tuning radio. So let's go into the tuning radio. Obviously for copyright reasons we cannot play any audio, but we're going to show you. You can select whatever you want, basically we can go into music, enter. This is real CarPlay. So CarPlay is meant to work in two modes, touch screen, or joystick controls. Most European cars, BMW, Mercedes, Audi, VW, they don't have touchscreen, they have joysticks. So they have rotary knob. If you go to Apple website, as a matter of fact, we're gonna show it to you. If we're gonna go to apple.com, Apple, 
youtube.com forward slash carplay and if you go to Apple's website we're gonna show it to you right on Apple's website see if you go to apple.com forward slash carplay this is the carplay menu and if you go over here it tells you control with words or touch or twist so we got the twist option and if we go over here you can do touch or knobs and controls you see what it says right here it says carplay also works with knobs dials or buttons in the car if it controls your screen it controls carplay so this is what we have right now this controls your car screen and we're controlling the carplay as you can see the blue highlight follow us where we go you got all factory real buttons basically so all the features of CarPlay work as expected, so you can go into any of the applications. We got pages and pages of applications. They're all the same pretty much because CarPlay and Apple tells developers how to make apps. So basically, you know, my favorite is tuning radio. You go into the radio, you select whatever you want. You see the blue highlight just follows it. And with one notch, notch, one turn, one turn, and it selects the next one. It's super responsive. Hip hop beat, you press on it, and it's gonna load through the internet see we're on Wi-Fi let's disconnect Wi-Fi so it loads faster through our LTE so basically whatever you select see now back on LTE again we're in a very low service area so don't mind it not loading because CarPlay is inside the phone one very important thing to remember about CarPlay very important CarPlay only lives inside your phone. Today or 20 years from now, all updates and apps are inside your phone. Now iOS 12 is coming with the new update. Once you update your phone, it's all here. You never have to worry about updating the hardware inside. Everything happens, all the updates, they happen right here in this phone. Whatever you add to your phone, as far as applications, they will appear here. If Apple decides tomorrow to change something, it will appear here. Now this is pause now you pause whatever is playing this is play we cannot play audio for copyright reasons but you know again now the it's paused it's playing actually if I press enter it's paused I can go back while now is playing something I can select 70s hits party hits US now if I want to pause it so now it's playing this is pause so I'm pausing it if I want to get out the music is gonna play and I can enter maps or I can call somebody, I can do whatever I want basically. So let's see what happens if we call somebody. Let's connect another phone. And just to show you, it even works on older phones, this iPhone 5, CarPlay works. So different set of menus a little bit, and you can move those applications by the way. If you go into phone settings, if you have a lot of applications, and you go into the settings, and you go into general, and you go into CarPlay, and you can rearrange the apps the way you want. Look at the screen. Look, I'm going to rearrange those two apps right now. Look what happens. You see they rearrange. Look, I'm going to put maps first. Right there, maps first one. So basically, this is not some kind of mirroring. Real Apple CarPlay. If you want to go into, and you want to call somebody, go into phone. Obviously, we Siri requires internet connection to use, but we don't need the phone. So we just want to use keypad. And whatever number you dial, let's say 555, five, five, one, two, one, two. And the system is super responsive. And that's it. I can go ahead and I can rotate it and I can press call. And it's going to go, you know. So we got CarPlay. Then we're going to connect Android Auto. Android Auto works a little bit different. We're going to show it to you because it also uses these two buttons right here and uses this button. So we're going to show you what it does. But CarPlay is very easy. This is your left rotate, right rotate. As you can see, look. See, we're in left rotate, right rotate. Enter. This is to enter whatever menu you want to enter. So basically, if you enter in music, it enters the music. This is back to get out. Back, back. So same thing as any other car now we download Apple CarPlay demo we're gonna go ahead and connect Android and show you how the Android works now let's test Android Auto 
take your Android phone, plug it in. It's going to say Android Auto on the screen. Android Auto is loading. And over here it's going to say Android Auto. So it says connect to your card. It's the first time when you connect a new phone to a new device, it takes a minute for it to load. But actually it's going to say Android Auto and it's going to load. It's going to load and it's going to say Android Auto on the screen. So let's wait for it to load. All right, so Android Auto has loaded. You got the menu. Now the main screen is going to appear. Okay, so this is real Android Auto. You got your menu. You got everything. Now, the difference is that it requires a little bit more buttons. So for Android Auto, we have to use this button and these two buttons over here. So I'm going to show you how it works. So this is your map, phone, main menu. So you see, I'm rotating. Nothing is happening. I need to get down into the menu. These buttons now act to get down. However, if you go back into factory stuff and you go into climate control, this is going to control the climate. You see I'm pressing, the climate is being controlled. But if I'm in a CarPlay mode, I recommend doing a sync so you can control from this side. And when you go back into the CarPlay mode, if you hear any noise in the background, just let it. This menu, to get into this menu, you need to press down and then you can rotate. You see as I'm rotating, it changes the highlights. You see? I can enter. This is the music app. So whatever music apps you have, you click on enter and it's going to open up music apps. This phone doesn't have any music apps, but you can load whatever music apps you load and you're going to be able to play it from here. Now, if you want to go back, you press back. You see Google Play Music. It's actually loading, but it doesn't have any music on it. To play something, open menu on the left. You see, you need to open menu on the left. This button, screen off, opens that menu on the left. This is called the burger menu. You press this button, and it opens up all the menus. So whatever app has this menu, whether it's Waze or Google Map or anything else, the screen off button opens that menu for you. So basically, you press and see the menu is open. Now inside that menu, you can rotate again and go into any recent activity, playlist, podcast, up, 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 back, goes back. In the menu, now I need to get back into this menu, right? So I want to go to navigation. I need to press down. So this is your up and down. You press down. It's not required for Apple CarPlay, but for Android Auto, not only we need to rotate, we need to go up and down. So basically, you go into your maps, and over here, again, we don't have any maps installed on this phone. This is just a demo phone, but, but it opens up your maps, and if you have Google Maps or Waze, it will let you select both of the maps. Okay, so we have your maps here. So basically, if you want to change something, you press this arrow down over here. So let's try to highlight. So this is your up, down, left, right, enter, back, and this is the menus that open up on the left hand side so let's zoom in back into the screen so if you want to go if you want to open up this menu over here you need to press screen off button right here and it opens up the menu it opens and closes the menu and then if you want to enter this menu on the bottom you press this one and then you can rotate whatever you want here load the music up for example and if you want to again open here press screen off and it opens this menu so basically you got the menu when you need to open up this is the button this is your back this is your rotation left right and this is to go up into the menu you see it right here I'm now in this line and if I want to go back in here and do something I'm in here so basically this is your Android Auto. Again, whatever apps exist in Android Auto, they add it into your phone, so you load the phones from the App Store, and then you never have to worry about updates or updating the interface. In 10 years, if they release Android 27 or whatever the number is going to be, when it's updated inside your phone, it's automatically updated everywhere else. You only have to worry about updates inside your phone. Now, let's continue to the other features. Now, you will got another feature called video in motion see this button press and hold you hear this beep and then press and hold you hear another beep so one beep video in motion activated press and hold two beeps video in motion deactivated this is 
for factory DVD and drive. So let's focus on this for one second. We're going to load the movie and we're going to check this out. Okay, so don't worry about the focus not clear here. We're focusing on the buttons right now. So we're going to go ahead and load the movie. And as you know, once you start driving, the video would shut off. We give you that additional option. So if you have a factory DVD player and you want to use it while driving, so let's go into media. Let's go into DVD. Where's our video here? To disc. And now it's going to open up the movie. So you got the full screen here. So this is a preview of some movie or something. Now, as you may know, that when you go into reverse, your rear camera appears factory as before. But as soon as I start to drive, my video would shut off. So let's start driving and watch that our video is going to stop playing because we have. See, the video is disabled, function disabled while driving. Now, here's what we're going to do we're going to press this button and we're going to hear one beep. Now you can press full screen. And now, no matter what I do, when I'm driving, I will see my movie. So, so now when I'm going to go forward, my movie plays and doesn't shut off anymore. So this is video in motion. This is the button that activates video in motion. Again, press and hold, two beeps video in motion disabled. Press and hold, one beep enabled. However, keep in mind one thing that video in motion enables and disables when the video when you shut off the car so this is video in motion now, this is the basic radio with a left arch signal I'm gonna have a left camera this camera is not adjusted it has lines you can buy camera without lines if you did not install the camera there's nothing to worry about when you put left turn signal you're not gonna see anything right turn signal again right camera you have the lines you can buy camera without lines if you did not install a camera again nothing to worry about nothing is gonna happen in reverse we got our factory camera the factory ca camera pops up on the screen when the car is in reverse and then in drive you got your front camera so let's look at it again in reverse you got the factory camera and in drive we got the front camera front camera shuts off automatically once the vehicle reaches the speed of 10 miles an hour Watch this. You see, as soon as I reach speed of 10 miles an hour, it's off. That's it. Again, I'm parking slowly. You see, I'm backing up slowly. Then put the car in reverse, in drive, and I have front camera. Boom, the camera is off. Now, it's very important to understand one thing. That if you're driving really slow, the camera will stay on it only shuts off after 10 miles an hour so again in reverse rear camera in drive you got Frankie so I'm parking really slow I can see the object but once I speed up up to 10 miles an hour that's it camera is off that's about it all the features and again if you're not installing one of those cameras, the images will not switch over. It will just continue to work. Thank you for watching. Please click the logo on the left hand side to subscribe to the channel. Subscriptions work on smartphones, tablets and computers. Please like the video. Please click the notification bell and please leave a comment about this video. If you want to watch another video, please click the video on the right hand side.